Hello and welcome to Lore Dive, where we look into the lore of all of our favorite video games to analyze and explain aspects of the game's story. Today, we are diving back into Dead by Daylight, an asymmetrical horror game where one killer must hunt down and kill up to four survivors. In this episode, we will be looking at the second batch of survivors that have been gradually released throughout the game's lifetime, Nia, Ace, Fang, and David. Nia Carlson, the urban artist. Nia grew up in the small town of Hue, Sweden. She had a relatively happy childhood even though her mom and dad were often working. In her earlier years, she spent her time having fun with her friends. However, in her early teens, she learned that her parents would have the opportunity to move to the United States as part of their job. As this opportunity to move to the US became a reality, she started acting out, making her parents believe that she lacked the thing that made everybody else quote unquote normal. Her oblivious parents didn't really pick up on this as a reaction to the move, and thus Nia was forced to leave her friends and old life behind. In reaction, Nia, now 16, shied away from what her parents considered normal activities and instead took refuge in skate parks, finding a new life and becoming a tagger and a bit of a troublemaker. Her tag, Mashtix, was often seen all over her new hometown, and Nia especially made a sport out of tagging government buildings. Nia was now fully immersed in this culture, dyeing her hair and cutting it the way she liked. One day, she may have gone too far when her friends dared her to tag the old and abandoned Crotus Pren Asylum. Nia bravely, and foolishly, accepted their dare and entered the asylum, but never came back out. Nia's parents at this point had become numb to Nia disappearing for days on end, and didn't even bother reaching out to the police when she never came back home. Just like the other survivors before her, Nia must try to escape this hellish world of the entity, as well as the killers that share in her torment. In the procedurals, she is nimble and almost cat-like, being able to evade deadly dangers. Years on skateboards has proven worthy training, and keeping her head down to avoid the fuzz has allowed her a unique way to avoid her pursuers. The main question that remains is, will her own willpower sustain her until she finds a solution that allows her to escape for good? Nia's first perk is Balanced Landing. Nia has learned how to use her cat-like reflexes to her advantage when falling from long distances. Upon landing from a drop from a certain height, Nia will start sprinting at 150% of her normal speed for up to 3 seconds. Afterwards, she will be put in the exhaustion state until she can regain her breath. Nia's second perk is Urban Evasion. Nia's years of evading the cops is now put to good use as crouching past them has taught her a thing or two about stealth. With this ability, the speed that Nia moves at while crouching is greatly increased, being equal to her regular movement speed at max rank. Nia's third perk is Streetwise. Spending nights out on the street has taught Nia how to get the most out of what she has. Whenever Nia is using an item, Streetwise reduces the consumption rate of the item up to 15%. If an ally is using an item within an 8 meter radius of Nia, they share this reduced consumption rate. Nia now uses her stealth and agility to avoid her pursuers when participating in the entity's twisted game, but only time will tell if she ever manages to reach the world she left behind. Ace Visconti, the Lucky Gambler Ace Visconti is considered to be one charming guy. With his sharp Italian looks, gray streaked hair, and silver tongue, he could pass for an aging 50s movie star. It has been assumed that he has broken his share of hearts throughout his life, but his heart has always belonged to the cards. In order to raise himself from his roots as a poor boy in Argentina, he gambled, scammed, seduced, and smooth-talked his way into a life of luxury as a high roller in the land of opportunity. Despite money always having a way of slipping through his fingers, Ace always figured he could win more, as he always considered himself lucky. His luck, however, had a tendency to be both good and bad and he never managed to fulfill that ambition. Eventually, he racked up too many debts with the wrong kind of people, almost ensuring that his luck would have run out. When these groups finally came to collect, Ace was nowhere to be found, having disappeared without a trace. No one knew who tipped him off or where he fled to, but anyone who knew Ace Visconti can agree on one thing, he will survive against all odds. 
It's not certain if his fall into the Entity's realm was his own doing, or how he entered the realm in the first place. However, Ace now goes through every challenge set before him with a wink and a smile, his eerie confidence igniting a spark of hope in his allies, one that his true enemies will do anything to snuff out. Ace's first perk is Open Handed. Ace's mere presence and attention to detail strengthens himself and his allies, increasing their aura reading abilities. At max rank, it can increase various aura perks range by a maximum of 8 meters. Ace's second perk is Up the Ante. Ace knows that the more teammates he has, the luckier he will be. For each other survivor still alive in the procedural, Ace and the other survivors will get a bonus percentage added to their luck, making it easier to escape traps and sacrificial hooks. Ace's final perk is Ace in the Hole. Lady Luck is often on Ace's side, ensuring that if he pulls an item from a chest in the procedural, the item will have a 100% chance of having a very rare add-on or lower attached to it. It also has an added effect, where there is a chance that it will also have a secondary attachment that is uncommon or lower as well. Whether Ace is extremely lucky or extremely unlucky depends on how you view the situation as while he may not be in the best circumstances, he is determined to survive as long as his luck can hold out. Fang Min, the focused competitor. Fang Min was a young girl when she first picked up computer games, and she was instantly hooked. The new world she came across enchanted her with colors, sounds, and explosions, a chance to be somewhere else or someone else. Her parents saw no wrong with a few minutes in front of the screen, but as minutes turned into hours and sometimes days, they finally decided to pull the plug and force Feng Min to put more efforts into her studies. Feeling smothered by her parents who refused to see the potential of a future in gaming, she left home and spent her time in internet cafes and LAN parties where their rules didn't apply. She spent hours playing, streaming, competing to rise to the top. Her parents had become what she called holiday parents, as she never saw them outside of the holidays and became the black sheep of a one-child family. In the gaming world, however, she found the respect that she wanted, nicknamed the Shining Lion. She was invited to a prestigious esports team and invited to live in their dorms. Here is where she found a sanctuary free from the misconceptions and prejudice that she had felt from her parents and the non-gaming world. Feng Min pushed herself to the limits to prove she was the best. Sleep was less important to her than training, and at the top of her game, she filled stadiums with fans who adored her. Of course, it couldn't last forever, and eventually she pushed herself too far, slept too little, and her performance began to slip. She started to lose. At night, constant doubts would force her to stay up, tormenting her with thoughts of disappointing her fans and her parents. She spiraled out of control and fell into a pattern of self-destruction. She started wandering the streets and visiting bars where no one knew of esports, and waking up in places she didn't remember. One day, after a particularly nasty bender, she woke up somewhere completely different, someplace she had never seen before. She awoke in the entity's never-ending nightmare. Despite this, Bangman did not despair. As she learned more about the challenge she was up against, she realized that this is what she had been training for her entire life. And despite the deck being stacked against her, she was determined to win. Fang Min is an interesting person, having many disjointed aspects to her personality that make her hard to classify. She's adept at being malleable and fitting into many different situations, and thus pulling her own unique abilities from the entity. Fang's first perk is Technician. Adept at handling different types of machinery with care and precision, she makes less noise when repairing generators, as her time gaming has also helped her when it comes to fixing her own mistakes. If she fails a skill check, there is a percentage chance that the generator explosion will be prevented. Fang's second perk is Live. Learning a few tricks of the trade, Feng knows how to use momentum to her advantage. 
After doing a fast vault, Fang will break into a sprint at 150% of her normal running speed for up to 3 seconds. Afterwards, she will suffer from exhaustion, and will be unable to use Lithe again until her exhaustion timer has depleted. Fang's final perk is Alert. Her acute senses are always on high alert. When a killer performs a break action, whether it be a pallet or a generator, their aura is revealed to Fang for up to 5 seconds. Determined to win the entity's little game, Fang jumps at any opportunity to get ahead, and will do anything and everything to make sure that she is the winner. She of course wants to be able to help others, but if it's down to it being either them or her, you can bet that she'll be the one running out the door. David King, the Rugged Scrapper The single child of a wealthy family, David King seemed destined for greatness. While growing up in Manchester, he demonstrated serious potential in both sports and academics, and with his family connections, all doors were open to him. He could have succeeded at anything, if it weren't for his combative nature. David lived for the adrenaline rush of a good fight, and would go out of his way to get into one. His robustness and athletic abilities led him to rugby, where he could cut loose and really cause a ruckus. King excelled and gained a reputation as a promising, if somewhat reckless, rookie. His meteoric rise came to an abrupt end when he lost his temper and assaulted a referee, earning himself a lifetime ban from the league and cutting short what most people assumed was going to be a long, successful career. King was unconcerned. Money was no issue, so he took it as an early retirement and focused on other fun things to do. Free from the constraints of a career and enabled by the wealth of his family, David King spent most of his time at the pub, drinking, watching games, and getting into fights. Some might say that he was wasting his life away. Not many people knew that he was also an occasional debt collector, or that he fought in clandestine bare-knuckle fight clubs. When David King stopped showing up at the pub, the few friends that he still had were not surprised. They figured he had finally picked a fight with someone stronger than he was. And, in a way, they were right. David King has managed to pull abilities from the entity that synchronize perfectly with his scrapper background and confident attitude. His first perk is, we're gonna live forever. David is surprisingly devoted to his friend's survival, willing to put himself in danger for their safety. With We're Gonna Live Forever, David gains a 25% stackable bonus to all of his blood points each time he takes damage protecting another survivor or saving them from the hook. His second perk is Dead Hard. David has learned not only how to take a beating, but also how to avoid taking a beating. After already injured and running, David obtains an active ability to dash forward and dodge an incoming attack, making him unhittable for a short time. After the dash has concluded, David will suffer from exhaustion and cannot use the perk again until he is no longer exhausted. David's final perk is no mither. When David is wounded, he is at his most tenacious. With this perk, David will be in the broken state throughout the entirety of the match, and will be unable to be healed past his starting value. Due to this, however, his grunts of pain will be reduced, and he will no longer leave pools of blood behind. If he is downed and left alone, he will be able to recover from the dying state on his own, without needing another person to help get him back up. David has been humbled by the entity and the killers in the realm, having been shown that while he is indeed strong, he is far from invincible. Now, like his newfound companions, he must learn to survive in this new environment. Or at least, try to survive. Thank you for watching this episode of Lore Dive. Next time we'll be going into the next batch of non-licensed killers, the nurse, the hag, the doctor, and the huntress. Also, I'm working on another lore dive that isn't related to Dead by Daylight. Do you want to know what it's going to be? Well, I guess I can give you a small hint. You were almost a Jill sandwich!